Hello, I'm Melina at Kiwi Connect, and we're here at New Frontiers 2016. Um, I'm with Simon Miller, who's the CEO of Pure Advantage. Um, Simon, do you want to just tell us in a nutshell what is Pure Advantage? Okay, uh, Pure Advantage is a is a think tank, and we're a, a voice for green growth, business green growth. We're um, we're founded by uh, Philip Mills and uh, a small group of uh, some of New Zealand's most successful business leaders to, with the aim to uh, transform New Zealand's economy to a low carbon economy. Right, and so what, what sort of initiatives are you looking at or what sort of business ventures are you talking about that, um, that could achieve a low carbon economy? Right, well it was, it was formed in 2012 uh, really in a response to a political regime that wasn't really doing very much about green growth in New Zealand. Uh, we have a very um, perception that New Zealand is very clean and green, but there's big gaps uh, in the in the actuality of that. So Philip and the trustees invested in some robust uh, economic research done with the University of Auckland and Vivid Economics in London to present opportunities that best aligned with New Zealand's future in a strategic way. And they, there are seven of them. So they uh, agricultural technology, biodiversity, biofuels, um, smart grid, renewable energy, housing, and waste of value. Yeah, so a lot, of, a couple of those that you mentioned there are things that New Zealand is traditionally already quite strong in. So agriculture, renewable energy. Um, what I guess opportunities do you see to build upon those strengths? Well, there again is the perception that we are really strong, and we have been leaders in agriculture. Um, but we've focused pretty heavily on um, profitability instead of productivity. That's in the dairy sector per se. And, uh, but you look much more broadly than that, so you have to go into forestry. We're in net deforestation, something like 20-odd thousand hectares a year right now, so we're trending downwards. On the renewable energy front, we've been sitting at 80% renewable energy, e renewable energy for a couple of decades, and we actually slipped down from about 90% when we took on more fossil fuels to provide our transportation. So there's therein lies the rub. We, we've really been, we, we, we like that because it's lowly populated and um, you know, we have this perception. You know, however, that these economic opportunities that we can really grasp and, and take a hold of, and that's what we're focused on in terms of a solutions-based uh, response. Do you see a lot of opportunities for, um, I guess, cross-sector ventures, perhaps renewable energy into transport, or um, I guess systems that, that work together in a whole systems approach? Absolutely, it's a good question. Uh, on the renewable, renewable energy front, um, of course, I mean, we could have an electric highway, you know, in a heartbeat with uh, fast charging stations and the uptake of electric vehicles, and, and that would drive that area. Um, on the you, you mentioned, I think we talked about ag tech before, biodiversity, bioproducts, waste of value, all of these areas are driven out of the primary sector. Um, forestry, um, smart farming, so you've, you know, a lot of, lot of cloud-based applications in terms of uh, more efficient farming and, and, and value-add products too. I mean, we've talked about this for decades in New Zealand and, uh, you know, yet we keep shipping off logs to, to you know, foreign countries like Asia and they get come back to us and chipboard and and but you know there are companies that are focusing on this now but it's hard but we need to focus on it with more R&D and, and, and capital investment. Yeah you mentioned um, a couple of questions ago that the size of New Zealand is quite small and perhaps a limiting factor so do you see a role for I guess people to be coming into New Zealand and working on on these issues together with New Zealanders? It's it's a it's a limiting factor if you think it's a limiting factor. I mean, I think it's um, it's it's a limiting factor in terms of the availability of of capital here on the ground to scale uh, something a clean technology innovation in such a way that it is, becomes a viable business. However, if you look at it as from a, from a test bed case, because we're isolated, we can kind of control these environments and and build opportunities. That, then it's not limiting at all. And I think that's what we absolutely should focus on. I mean, you look at places in the US, for example, there's large counties, but they can turn things around, you know. And so when you talk about four and a half million people, I think it's just possible to do that. It's that building up of New Zealand as an incubation nation, a place where you can test these products and really make something. Yeah, and it has been like that all along. But then what we talk about are our natural advantages. 
So pure advantage are our natural advantages, and, and, and we have advantages that no one else really has, and, and that's accentuated or, or amplified by the tyranny of distance and the fact that there's not many people coming here to exploit them. You know, um, yeah, we have three and a half million visitors per year, um, but tourism is, is basically our biggest GDP contributor, you know, second to dairy only, only in the last year. But, I mean, these are, these are huge opportunities. If, if we smart farm, um, focus on our biodiversity, forestry, you know, this, this will align and increase the sort of natural capital of, of New Zealand and the opportunities to invest and uh, test and scale. Yeah, playing to our strengths. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Simon, here Thank at you. New Frontiers 2016. Thank you very much.